Uh, our lab studies uh, the genome of organisms uh, and also the genome of cancer cells. And we work on two kinds of problems. Um, the uh, evolution and outcome of cancers and also on uh, genetic disorders of a spontaneous sort, that is non-heritable genetic disorders. And um, those are two very, it sounds like two very different things, but they're, they're related by our methodology, which is genomic analysis. Uh, what we do is uh, what you could call difference analysis. For example, if we're looking at a cancer, we'll want to see where that cancer uh, has mutated relative to the genome of the person who gave rise to that cancer. Um, that's differential genomic analysis, and it tells us where the cancer is mutated. And from the types of mutations, the number of mutations, uh, we can infer a lot about uh, cancer etiology. Well, biology has always been um, influenced strongly by uh, quantitative types. Uh, many physicists in the late 30s, early 40s, uh, 50s came into biology, uh, strongly influenced it. Um, there was a period, I would say, from the time I was a graduate student in the um, mid-70s till the mid to late 90s, where it was not particularly quantitative, and that was largely because of the revolution in recombinant DNA. So really all you needed to be a, to be a, a good biologist was um, a good sense of logic and a good imagination. Um, and mathematical and statistical skills uh, weren't really that necessary for, for much of biology. And I was in that group, actually. I'd studied um, earlier on as a mathematician, but I did used almost none of those, the, of the mathematical tools when doing biological research. Of course, the logic comes in handy, but the tools uh, were not very valuable. Um, there was no place for them because the kind of data that we were getting was very individual data. And I actually had a rule of thumb. I, a rule of thumb, I, I actually disliked statistics early on in my, in my life and, and felt that if, if I needed to do statistics to see what I was observing, then I wasn't really observing anything. But that changed um, with the advent of the uh, sequencing of the human genome. That changed everything. And the development of new high throughput methods of extracting data uh, it forced um, biologists to reconsider the value of statistics and mathematics in the analysis of their subject. Um, so a number of biologists moved in that direction. Not a lot, but um, quite a number did. And I was one of those that moved in that direction. You know, we are so close uh, historically to that period. Um, and the data that's coming out of that effort is still being generated. I think it's very hard for any of us uh, to really judge the impact that it has had. Uh, it was a huge revolution uh, in terms of the kinds of uh, experiments one could conceive of doing. Um, the only thing comparable in my lifetime was the D recombinant DNA revolution, um, which changed entirely the kinds of experiments that people did. Um, since sequencing methods are changing so fast, I mean, the, the, the cost of sequencing is, is, has dropped enormously. And with each drop in the cost, it changes entirely how you, how you think of attacking a problem. So um, in a few years from now, uh, we'll be in a position to have DNA sequence of very high quality for a million people and know the medical history of these million people. And um, there will be, you know, uh, I don't even think our computers are yet to a stage where they'll be able to handle data of that type. And the kind of uh, analysis tools that will be needed to analyze that haven't been developed yet. So we're, we're in a really a strange point in the history of biology where 
things are changing so rapidly, we don't really, we really can't quite see the shape of the future yet.